What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So we are back again. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Let's try that again. What's going on, y'all? We are back again for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode eight. Oh, mama, okay? Because we're dealing with mommy issues this episode. That's what the premise is. You got K. Michelle dealing with the fact that she got to talk to Tone. She's been talking to everybody about this issue that she's been having with Tone about, you know, her surrogate, whether or not she really wants her to continue to do it. She's getting a little bit too personal. She sit down with Tone and she said, girl, let me tell you something. My lawyer been telling me some things that, you know, Ray and some good questions or whatever some concerns that i need to talk to you about and baby one of those concerns is that youtube video that you put up that made me embarrassed okay i don't need people to know all that and then having you get all you try you trying to get close and everything and that ain't what i'm trying to do this is a business and let me tell you something you need to tell your nigga to step the fuck back too okay put that nigga in check because at the end of the day i'm not giving him money he's not even your husband i said i told y'all it was the dude it was the dude pulling the string he saw a money grab and that's what he trying to do okay and trying to use it for his benefit probably trying to get a contract and something or whatever no nigga you not carrying the baby she is okay moving on from that you know um she was just basically trying to put it out there that there could be other options so you need to get your shit together if you really want me to continue with you at this point in time move on okay move on so then we get this thing where april you know she going down there to her mom's and um, we do remember they showed the flashback scenes about how, you know, April and her mama, they didn't really get along. You know, to be quite honest, it was a touching. I really didn't care. Okay. Cause we heard this and I feel like they threw this scene in here with her mom and, you know, trying to throw this scene in here. I guess this whole episode to try to make it seem like, you know, we need to feel something for April at this point after she look, made herself look an ass or whatever to try to understand the reason why she's acting the way that she's acting. Oh, because, you know, I got mommy issues. You know, my mama dropped me off when I was, she had me until I was five years old. She dropped me off at my grandma's house and had her take care of me. I was a problem child. I didn't understand. I was angry. Woo, woo, woo. Same story that a lot of people already have, but they not out here wilding out doing what you did or, you know... They're not out here making an ass of themselves, okay? Not a lot of them, you know? And the mom, you know, when the whole thing happened with um, Omarion, I thought you was going to lose, I thought you was going to die something looking at you, you know, weighing 100 pounds and stuff like this. And it made me mad because at this point, we are only getting one side of the story. One side of the story. And at this point, it's like, April, like, Omarion is a storyline, and he's he's on this show, and not even on this show. He's a whole ass storyline, okay? he That's that's all that girl talked about is Omarion this, Omarion left, Omarion didn't um, let me know what was going on. I was suffering. I was crying. I was doing this. I was doing that. Yeah, it is probably part of your story, but it's like you just trying to make yourself look like a victim victim, okay? Like you didn't do anything wrong, and I just, given how April been acting, I just can't see her now not doing nothing to contribute to him wanting to leave. If he just leave, left, that's fucked up. And I'm not trying to say that he's completely innocent in this shit. No, but I'm saying she ain't completely innocent either. Okay. And I just want him to get a gag order on her ass. So she can't be, um, saying his name all up in the press and on TV and shit. That'll stop her coins right there. But, um, moving on from that, we get this scene with, um, uh, what's her name? Apple Watch, okay? And you know, her sister Bonnie's still there. Her play sister Bonnie's still there. And Brittany B come over there. They explain the situation and how close they are and the reason why they stay together and stay, you know, in a good relationship. And Bonnie and Apple Watch have such, have a better relationship than Apple Watch have with her own biological brothers and sisters, siblings, you know? And I feel like that's messed up, but that's just how it be sometimes. She said it's like six of them. And they're spread out, and one of them do live in California, so they do kind of talk, and she called up there, um, reached out or whatever, because her and her mom found out that she was, uh, you know, went through some surgery and was in pain and all that stuff and wanted to come see her. And she was like, I don't even understand why my mama reached out, because for the simple fact that I haven't spoken to you in a year, okay? I kicked you out of my house for whatever reason. You know, mama probably was dealing with some addictions and stuff like that. Apple Watch admitted that she dealing with the addiction of alcohol and, you know, because she was talking about when they was at that, uh, that, that, um, 
unplug event and she was drunk and she did talk about the lyrica and um you know situation and she was like i'm both y'all friends i want y'all just to sit down and talk this shit out that's all that y'all need to do be mature women about it and talk it out i said that's all you have to do at the end of the day and if you come to the conclusion that you go your way and she go her way let that be that and move the fuck on because to be quite honest i feel like the problem with lyrica and britney is all in britney's head that's all it is okay and I bet you she gagging since uh, Lyrica posted that picture of uh since she all up Black China's ass. She posted that Instagram uh, or was it with Snapchat or whatever, Insta story, whatever the fuck. There's a video of Black China with Baby Ocean. Girl, fuck out of here. I know Britney B was looking at this shit like, ain't this about a bitch? <laughs> yeah, girl. You can't dictate who um be cool with who. Uh, just because you don't like them, you need to start telling people that. But, you know, Apple Watch, she going through her stuff. Girl, I really hope you going to your regular doctor and getting yourself checked out because you did get that surgery done at a storefront, at a storefront facility. But, yeah, we'll see what happened with that because, you know, Apple Watch is going to see what's going on with her mom. And then they was, you know, having a little uh, commiserating session because, you know, the saying they have similar stories. You know, Brittany was talking about how she hasn't spoken to her mother in five years because she had a uh, drug and alcohol problem or whatever. And they both need to reach out or thinking about reaching out or thinking if they should reach out and try to, you know, salvage the relationship if they could. If you can, do it because you never know, you know, when will be the last time be the last time. You know what I'm saying? But we'll see. So, Lyrica G is up on stage. Big Lyrica. Like, girl, let me tell you something. <clears throat> I need the album. Okay, let's, let's, let's stop hating and let's admit, Miss Lyrica G can sing her ass off, okay? Britney B, B is at the little showcase too, you know. She was like, damn, Lyrica G is up there singing. She got so much soul. How come she couldn't pass that down to her daughter? I said, you're supposed to be there to make up with your bitch and you up here just throwing shades and shots for what? For what? Okay, you're getting on my nerves. Um, um... Then Lyrica G got the album about to come out called Ready or Ready to Love. And then it's produced by Mr. Dalvin from Jodeci. Freaking you, Jodeci. Come and talk to me, Jodeci. You know, baby, like, I'm sitting here like, oh, my God, look at Mr. Dalvin. That's T.I. from TLC X. But um, we're not going to get into that. But, um, girl, the history, okay? Move on from that. That was like Casey and uh, Mary. Mary. Listen, moving on, moving on. Um, <clears throat> not as bad, but yeah, it was there. Moving on from that, Brittany Bree bring her ass over there to talk to Lyrica to say hello to Miss um, Lyrica G or whatever. Well, you did real good. And she was like, you know, Lyrica is surprised that she there. And you know, this fake stuff about how they cool and, you know, they was okay at one point. They had a little fun now. Now they all right or whatever. Of course, you know, she brings up the live and all that stuff about, um, you know, Summer Bunny and everything. Mind you, Pam was there. Pam was there, and Lyrica G was just confused about everything that was going on. She was like, girl, what are you doing here? Well, uh, I ain't getting no invitation to come, so therefore I still decided to show up. You know, we went through our shit, so I feel like we need to just go ahead and, uh, you know, put let back on, speak up, go on, and, then, and let's go get a drink. I said, oh. And that's what she did. You know, at this point, you know, everybody was trying to be even killed. They're not trying to ruin the night or whatever for the most part. But then when that summer buddy shit came up, you know, um, Brittany B was like, I thought Zell was supposed to be your homeboy or whatever. But he on that um thing with her. So what's going on with that? And so uh, it was like, I mean, yeah. Then here comes Zell walking in talking about something, you know. I can be a little shady, but see, Lyrica, my homegirl, and, you know, I don't want her thinking what uh, one thing about the uh, Summer Bunny uh, Instagram live thing, which it really wasn't. I said, what was it? You don't need to sit down. If that's my friend, I'm not going to be on nobody's Instagram lives with the bitch that fucked around on 
uh, try to fuck around with my friend's uh, husband, girlfriend, whatever. Okay, that's not what we do. You know, I don't need to get your side of the story. The side of the story is the the, the story is both y'all fucked around and it's fucked both y'all. That's what it is. Okay, I don't need no explanation. You knew he was married. He knew he was married. Y'all still decided to do that shit, so it's fucked both of y'all. Ain't no trying to get no explanation. You was just being messy, Zell. Get the fuck out of here. I said, boy, bye. So, Zell and... Bar oh, I'm about to call her Barney. Oh, don't do that, Ashley. Because, no. Brittany. They start getting into it. And let me just tell you that Zell is a messy-ass bitch. That's what he is, okay? He's the messy gay that I told y'all I don't like fucking with. Because you can't trust him. They're two-faced. And he's showing all those negative qualities of what people may think or perceive some gay men to be. You know, messy... Two faced, always trying to read, always trying to shade, and all this stuff. But yet, you can't read, you can't shade. All those reads that you was trying to get to Britney B were late as hell. Oh, you look like a zebra. Oh, your booty look like it stink. Oh, your ankles look as big as my arm. Okay, I'm sitting here like, wow, Britney was eating your ass up, and she wasn't really giving you nothing either. She wasn't reading shit either. Okay, and that bitch said you look like a fake ass Tupac. I said, which where? <laughs> <laughs> that girl, I had to look at your ass like, oh, uh, and he talking about something. Don't you owe me an apology? She said, for what? Because of what you said about my friend and the Uber and all that stuff or whatever. Uh, I was talking to your friend. I wasn't talking to you. Okay. So therefore I don't owe you anything. Well, we a package deal. We like a couple. We like we married or whatever. She said, bitch, first of all, I didn't know you like girls. I said, Brittany, slow up. Okay. Cause that's not what he meant. And you knew that you was just trying to be funny. That's what I'm talking about. A late read. Okay. It wasn't really the read fell flat okay and so at the end of the day she don't owe you an apology Zell, because you brought somebody that she did not tell you to bring okay that's one second of all like she said grow the fuck up this ain't high school uh, kindergarten or whatever but on the same hand Brittany, you need to grow the fuck up too because you do the same excuse me you did the same thing um when it came to lyrica and when it comes to people you cool with liking lyrica or somebody that you're not cool with girl get out of here and when she finally left, I was like, go somewhere with that shit. It was just stupid. And so, Zell, basically, you know, Lyrica, because at one point, you know, um, Brittany brought up the whole thing about, you know, the summer buddy and all that stuff. You won't lie with her. He was like, I don't owe nobody no explanation. Anybody want an explanation can suck my dick, whatever. And then Lyrica was like, Exa uh, excuse me, who? Because she the one that's old uh, explanation. Don't put out a blanket statement trying to be big and bad, you know, like that. And you don't necessarily mean lyrical, but you could, you know, it could be misinterpreted. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, they do get into a conversation about the whole thing. And it was all lies. It was all lies. Talking about some, you know, um, Mr. Ray wanted him to meet up with her or whatever, do a photo shoot or some shit like that. And so she had to go see exactly who she was and all that stuff. So he punched on her story. And before he can even say Say anything or get anything out. Um, that's when they got that he got that FaceTime call from um, you know, a one in her. And I said, That is a lie. The way he was positioned on that story, he was already asking her questions about the situation as if he's been on the live for a minute. I said, Bitch, you can't lie for shit. So you a lazy read, you a late read, you can't shade, and you can't even lie. Damn, you ain't good for shit, nigga. Baby, I'm sitting here like, boy, if you gonna get out of here with this shit. And, you know, she put that out that, you know, she going through a divorce with A1 or a separation, crying and shit like that. Whatever. No, y'all not. No, y'all not. Yes, they are. Okay. Then we get this thing with um Hazel. Hazel? Who the fuck is Hazel? Bitch, ew. I'm about to say Hazel E. How the fuck did that bitch pop up in my head? Ew. <sighs> mm, let me, um, mm, I got a cleanse. Oh, whew, okay. But, um, Apple Watts, her sister and her mother come over. You know, um, she don't have a good connection with everybody. The family is all over the place or whatever. The mom don't live in California no more. She lives in Vegas out there with the grandma. The grandma don't really talk to them. Um... We get the dynamic of the family. The family is dysfunctional as hell, okay? The mama been in jail. The mama has addiction. The sister, Apple Watts, all of them been in jail. They was looked at by the grandparents, but the grandma basically made them go to foster care and only looked after the triplet, their triplet sisters 
Um, and they was left to fend for themselves. The uh, sister, Dominique, the one that was there, she basically took care of Apple Watch, did what she had to do. If it was hoeing, tricking, doing whatever, you know, stealing, robbing, she did what she had to do. Um, and they all got records and everything. I said, damn, a family that does crime together. Oh, got issues together. Baby, they was talking about, you know, mending fences and getting back in touch. And I do like that. I like that. And, you know, that they was able to, even if it, even if the camera was there or not, if it was the play play or not, I do like the fact that they actually sat there and they did not get rowdy with one another. Well, you did this, you did that, and you motherfucker this, and all this stuff. They ain't do that. They just had a calm, cool, collected conversation, and I was here for it. But what took me out was when her sister, Dominique, pulled that charger out and said, Bitch, let me charge my leg. <laughs> I said, the get tell the ghetto is anywhere you are okay baby i don't care she brought the ghetto into that house baby i said what <laughs> she pulled that bitch out like she was about to charge her phone and said let me charge my leg apple was like you still on that girl yeah you know i'm still on <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. But, bitch, it took me out. Because I wasn't expecting it. She just pulled it. I said, bitch, what type of phone is that, girl? It's the parole violation 360. That's what it is, girl. Get out of here. I said, oh, no. <laughs> so, K. Michelle meets up with um this guy, Christian Bush. I think he's from a group named Sugarland in country music. You know, he's a Grammy Award winner. I've heard of that. I've heard of him. I heard of the group. Is it a group? Either way, I've heard of it. You know, I watched me a little country um movie channel too, a little bit here and there. I, I did want to dabble in some of the little country music. Let me tell you something. Can Michelle fit right in? And I don't know if he necessarily true about, you know, it's true about what um dude said because she did bring up a, a question because he was like, you need to perform at this p certain place that I guess is like the Apollo of, you know, country music or whatever. And, you know, she was like, you know, I'm, I'm nervous. He said, hell, I get nervous going there every time too. But she was like, what about the race thing? Any racism and stuff like that? He was like, listen, if you make a good song, people going to say they love that song. They don't say they love that artist. They say they love that song. And then they become a fan of you once they figure out who the artist is because they still going to love that song regardless. I was like, if you say so, because they know they gave old boy from Hootie and the Blowfish hell. The black guy. Ain't it Hootie and the Boy Blowfish? When he tried to go, um, he went solo and did country music or whatever. I mean, he got successful at it, but he had a little uh drawback to it too. I mean, um, Beyonce gave her version of uh <laughs> shit, and you know they really want here for it. Or uh, Lil Nas X, they really want here for it. You know, it, it just I don't know if I agree with that statement, but you know if that's what he believe. And it was really nice. Let me tell you something. K. Michelle would fit up into country music. Let me tell you something. The way they came up with that, that song on the fly, which was cute. I like that little impromptu session. That's how you know that you really a musician. Um, You could just play a little ditty and then you like freestyle on the flow like that. I liked it that. And then at the same time, let me tell you something. Go back, go listen to some country music. Like they be, they be talking about some, they, they wow, baby. They talk about everything on that shit. Girl woke up and called my mama bitch. You know what I'm saying? Girl, you're drunk as fuck, and I'm gonna do this, bitch. I be like, hold up, with a country twang to it. I said, okay, you know, it, it, it'll grab you in, you know. But sometimes the motherfucking racist. But um, anyway. Moving on from that, that was a cute little moment. Then we get this whole opposite scene. We go from sugar to shit, bitch. Because Lyrica, she moving everything out with her friend Sia. Okay, she got the move. Take the massage chair, take the TV, take that uh, mirrors all off the wall, get all my plaques, get my stuff right here, you know. Bitch, when Lyrica G came up in there, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I said, bitch. Mona had you standing outside in a car, and she said, and go. Okay? Oh, my God. What's going on? I said, good acting. Somewhat good acting, okay. But basically, what happened is, um, you know, it, you know, she got these e e DMs, okay, on Instagram or whatever, 
from this girl who was saying that her friend fucked around with A1. You know, A1 going out of town for a couple of days or whatever. He was on the plane talking to some chick and wound up taking her back to her hotel, his hotel or whatever, fucking her out. And then, you know, the girl was bragging to her friend about it. And she had already been sending the, I guess it must have been proof. It had to have been proof because I'm not going to just, you You can't tell me she's just going to take the words of, you know, some random person. But she said she had been sent you the stuff, been sent her the stuff. And then Lyrica realized that A1 had been going into her account and deleting the messages. I said, bitch, that's a guilty bitch right there, okay? Even if it was false, why are you deleting the messages? You know what I'm saying? Why are you going to her stuff? You know what I'm saying? That makes your ass look guilty as hell. And so at this point, she was like, I'm done with it. It is what it is. Mama found out. She was like, oh, hell, let's go. And they was like, what about the dog? She said, fuck that dog. <laughs> I said, don't leave the dog that bad. Now, even my cold-hearted ass, you know, I could be insensitive at some times. I can admit that. I can admit that, y'all, okay? The first step to, you know, saying that you have a problem is that you have to admit that there's an issue, bitch. And I can admit that I can be insensitive and cold-hearted sometimes, okay? But, baby, I will not leave the animal by itself. How it's going to feed for itself? No, don't do that. Have somebody watch that little motherfucker. But, um, I was like, you're going to go right back to his ass. So, you know, that was a crew hired by Mona that was taking the stuff out. Talk about something. She's going to put that shit in storage. That was only a little bit of stuff. And they're going to put the rest. That was stuff that was overcrowding the house already. And they already planned on putting it in storage. That's what that was. April is still up in Chicago. She up there chilling with Shonda, which is Willie's, um, AKA, uh, Willie Taylor from, um, day 26 and Ryan, you know, from, did you see on the commercial when she said, um, give me a tattoo. What you want me to pay you? I'll give you some pussy to pay it. I said, wait a minute. I, ugh, she just takes it over and beyond. I don't care if you're joking or not. Girl, have some cooth, okay? But um, uh, she was in the studio, and I was like, girl, maybe Britney B was right. <laughs> Don't say it. You got to put some feeling into it, okay? Then you go to this family dinner or whatever. You got your friends, and you got your family. You got Paris there. You got Willie and Shonda there and all that stuff. Andrew, um, and basically, you talking about the whole situation and why he not going to be able to come to a thing and the conflict that it's causing. And even Willie is like, you know, from somebody on the outside looking in, it do look like you had a, two babies with this man. They were friends at one point. You had two babies with this man and now you've moved on from him to the next person. It do look fishy or whatever. And like Paris said, people might respect your ass more, which we probably won't. Nine out of ten, we won't. But they will respect that little small aspect of it a little bit more if you just be truthful because we tired of the fucking lies because you lied to us straight to our face like we don't know, like we dumb as shit. Y'all leaving each other talking about some bad bae. Girl, get the fuck up out of here. And then you got your mama sitting there crying about, you came in and you did this and I so appreciate you and all this stuff. <sighs> And you keep on saying, if I fall in love with him, I might, I might, I could. And so what? What is this going to do? Girl, it ain't no if. Y'all already are. Like Perry said, y'all already are. That's why y'all take up for him and all this stuff. You know, here go Drew. Oh, excuse me. I, it was so hard to see her going through the things that she was going through. Nobody had to, should have to go through that or whatever. And what makes me mad about Fizz is because regardless of how you may feel about Moniece, you cannot tell me Fizz was the perfect angel in that relationship. When Monice go on her rants and stuff, I do believe that she be telling the truth about how that shit be going. She ain't ever denied that she is. She a fuck up herself. Okay, and we see that and we know that. But baby, you can't tell me that Fizz ain't do shit either. Okay, boy, don't try to act like the perfect person for this person and act as if your shit never stunk. Girl, get out of here. Get out of here. So, A1 comes home and he sees that Lyrica moved out. He saw it on the motion detector, on the uh, security camera and all that stuff. And he had, uh, Ray J had came over there trying to see what's going on too. Ray J know he full of shit and Ray J full of shit too. Okay. But, um, because Ray J is A1. Ray J been A1 before he got his shit together. Do I think Ray J out here still doing his old ways? No, I don't. And let me just say this. Ray J look really nice in the confessional in that little white. And he look nice in that floral little um, tracksuit short too. You know, I said, you know, Chunky A, uh, Ray J is thin. That guy look decent. 
okay, I see that. You know, you got to get the right colors to offset the skin and everything. You know, you know, darker skin look good on everything. You know what I'm saying? But and then, you you know, niggas love a white. L niggas love a white, okay? I was like, you look really decent. You look really decent. But back to this at the hand, okay? A1, when he was telling him the story about the whole, you know, meeting the girl up and all that stuff, even Ray J said, I'm skeptical about the thing, okay? And... You know, they, he, you can do this, you can leave, but you ain't going to tell me where my son at. That's one thing I don't play about. You should have thought about your son before you start putting your dick in other people, okay? And that's at the end of it. You know, he about to start saying something else and some, it's some noise or something that happened downstairs and they going to see and that's how it ended. Girl, let me get off here. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Peace.